Hi fellow van lifers and campers, this is KC and I like to explain a little bit about some of the things I've learned over the eight years. I've owned two different Sprinter vans, uh, the first one and now the second one here. Um, the first one was a short wheelbase and short height and the second one a long wheelbase and taller height or the middle height. And I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of each. And from my experiences of owning and overlanding uh, and traveling and camping out quite a bit in each one of those. My first Mercedes Sprinter van was this 144 inch wheelbase short height with a sports wheel penthouse top. Had it for many years, had many wonderful adventures camping out with it. It definitely has some advantages uh, in the shorter height. One, of course, it is a little more aerodynamic. It, uh, it's a little more sprightly. It uh, doesn't quite list as much when you're uh, going into turns and things like that. Um, but the reality is a lot of people think that it's really like the way to go because you can park in a garage, but you really can't. Uh, I think factory, the Mercedes Sprinter, uh, shorter height is like a little, about eight foot two inches tall. Most uh, garages are only seven or eight feet tall. And by the time you add uh, some oversized tires or a suspension lift, should you do that, or even solar panels to the roof or a, a roof fan, you've added several inches uh, with each one of those upgrades. And so you're certainly not parking in a garage unless you happen to have a tall garage. So that's certainly one nick against shorter height. It doesn't necessarily gain you much. You're not driving through drive throughs or parking garages or into parking garages with a shorter height van compared to the tall van. Another downside of the shorter height van is that while the pop top seems very romantic and it kind of is when you're sleeping up there, the reality is it also adds external height of several inches with the pop top and that's why partly why my old van got the name a cupcake but also it takes away several inches of uh, interior height to the van. And by taking away the interior height um, and having the shorter slider door and shorter rear doors of the van, I was constantly bumping my head when I would walk in and out of the van. Uh, I am six foot two, but really the slider door and it, once you add the pop top only really uh, provides about five foot six of clear height inside. So not enough to stand up and get dressed or change in there and certainly can be a head bumper all the time. This is in stark contrast to the tall sprinter or medium height sprinter because there actually are three heights to the sprinter. The medium height internal height uh, is about six foot four before you add insulation to either the floor and or the ceiling which you definitely need insulation in both to really make the van are comfortable for any kind of inclement weather, cold or heat, and also to cut down on noise, otherwise you're just in a metal can. So you definitely, the taller roof allows you to stand up in there with insulation in there, freely stand up, which is a complete game changer. The tower spinner also allows you to walk between the cab to the cabin or living space without bumping your head, without, without ducking, which is incredibly like, useful. It also provides for a storage space above the pa pa driver and passenger, which is fantastic. And speaking of storage, obviously having an additional uh, eight inches or so of height gives you a lot of additional storage, even in the doors, because the doors are taller. So in the slider door at the top of it, in the top of the rear doors, um, you can put speakers like I've done here. So that really is a great advantage of an additional storage height, as well as throughout the rest of the van. And this additional storage space or height really allows you to actually have a fixed bed inside the van all the time set up and still have additional space inside for like where I have a bike garage underneath. Uh, and in my case, I actually did a lifting uh, bed, uh, electrically lifting, and I have another video uh, that describes that. But the big advantage for me really was that I could put bikes inside, out of the weather, out of the prying eyes of thieves or dirt and things like that, and still be able to sleep inside and keep my gear inside, whereas that's much more difficult in the short height van. In Cupcake, my short height van, I did have this gaucho bed, which uh, was a fold, out, fold down couch. And so it worked moderately well for passengers while driving, but they always had to face sideways. And so when you slow down or speed up, kind of the heads could bump against each other and things like that. And when the bed was down, it took up the entire space, the entire living space. So really you had to get out of bed, step aside from the bed, 
and then set it back up in order to um, use the lower bed. And that was problematic and certainly less than ideal. The other uh, real big benefit of the taller van is you can stand up. You can stand up, you can wash your face, you can get changed, you're not bending over down your knees to do those things. You certainly have not only a lot more storage, but when you go to open up the slider door, you, you now aren't ducking to look out of it as I have to do in the shorter van. So you can really sit back and enjoy the views a lot easier and have a much bigger aperture of looking to the outside uh, when that slider door is open. And so those are some real big benefits to the taller van for me. Cupcake, my shorter van, didn't really allow me to put on a real solid roof rack. And that roof rack provides a lot of options. Um, one, I can stand on top of it. I can mount kayaks up there. Uh, I can walk around and even uh, lay up there and look at the stars. I can mount an awning, a real solid awning on the side, which is much harder to do with the penthouse top. Now, granted, with a solid rooftop, a non-penthouse, you can certainly do those things. But like mounting solar panels on the penthouse roof was challenging because you have penetrations to make in the, in the roof that certainly can uh, allow leakage. So those are some of the challenges with the penthouse top versus a solid top. If you're like me and you plan on camping out in cold weather or hot weather or where it's dusty or windy, definitely the solid wall, solid roof is way better than the soft tent top. Even driving uh, in dusty conditions and stuff, dust can get in, cold weather can get in. When you're camping out in the penthouse roof, you're in a tent and all that cold weather, warm weather, the noise, the wind, all that comes into the van. So I definitely prefer the solid roof that's well insulated and keeps uh, separation between me and the outside world while I am camping in the van. So let's move on to some of the negatives about the taller van. One. Uh, this picture was taken from my van looking back, but you can see there's a bit of a, a lean and some rocks or a big rock wall to the uh, left hand side there. Um, and in a taller van, you can lean over more. You definitely have obstacles that are above the van. Uh, one of the other challenges is, of course, it is more difficult to get IACs and, and things like that up to the roof rack and also down from it. Nonetheless, with the shorter van, you're still eight and a half feet off the ground. It's not something you can just lift a kayak, a heavy kayak or something onto the roof rack. So you still need a ladder and some other way to lower or raise uh, things like kayaks and certainly a way to get up onto the roof, uh, just as you do with a taller van. So in conclusion, I certainly prefer the taller van as it provides a much more comfortable place to camp out in, which is a big reason to have a van. It's quiet, it's warm, it's comfortable. You don't have to worry about the weather outside. Additionally, it also provides a lot more storage space. So thank you for watching. I'm gonna post a future video soon and also the differences from my experience of owning the shorter wheelbase versus the longer wheelbase van and that will apply to different brands of vans as well same as the height here does too and i think you'll find some value to that and then i'll post a couple more videos on some of the other things i found between the different vans that i've owned and also go into more on my van build uh, that i've shown here so thank you for watching please do subscribe and i look forward to sharing more with you soon get out there and camp and have a good time